In fact, I, you know, I have I, to I, say, I, like, Kevin is, that one of the things I think that also possibly makes your book good is that you speak in very visual terms. Like maybe you've heard Kevin say, a giant foot is going to come from the sky and crush you, or a laser beam is going to zap you. Like he, he's very colorful in his language, and cockroach is part of that. That's what I would say. I think it's part of my motivational therapy. <laughs> that, that's it. I think, you know, maybe you should be thanking me for saying that now that I think about it. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. She's offended by that, though, Kevin. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. My, my name's Shirley Bush, and um, I don't believe that the only freedom is wealth. I, I just simply don't believe it. Um, uh, well, Shirley, I, I've been rich and I've been poor, and here, after extensive research on this, <laughs> I've determined that rich is better. Now, maybe <laughs> money doesn't buy you happiness, but when you're no. miserable, it's a lot less trouble. Well, I'll tell you, I've, I have lived, I've been poor. My father was very ill for three years when I was young, and we, they lost their home, they lost their money, they lost absolutely everything. Uh, it took them 14 years once he was able to work again to, to get another home. They lost their home insurance, everything. Uh, and then I have lived um, in between a fairly affluent life at times. I'm back now to being uh, a widow and uh, uh, a borderline income. <laughs> and I am free. If you, I, I felt this immediately when I turned 65, too. You have a pension. Uh, I had Canadian, uh, Canada pension as well, because I was at business. But you turn 65, and you don't have an employer who can get mad and fire you or, or try to restrict your opinions. Um, if you have even three or four friends that you've had for a long time, they're still your friends. If your family has been able to put up with you all those years, they're not <laughs> going to suddenly put you in okay, a Okay, Shirley, it's settled. Nice I'm going to it's good for everything about Canada. I don't want to be relying on government, ever. Because I know the government changes every four to seven years. I don't know who they are. I know they work for me because I pay taxes, but I don't want to rely on them. I want to rely on myself. And all I'm saying is that that's a noble pursuit. Look, you have a, your story is a tough one, but I'm glad you're happy today. Happiness is ultimately freedom in itself. But I need more happiness. <laughs> well, there, there are three things, three advantages that you have. Not everyone does. Not everyone has drive and energy. Not everyone has the family background that you did. Not everyone has health or, or resistance to, to maybe addictions and problems. That's um, true, and I agree with you. And, and, but if, if, but if, but, you, if, but you are, if you're blessed with those things, why shouldn't you use them? is all I'm saying. You only live once, Shirley. We both know that. Yeah. I'm just trying to maximize my time here and enjoy myself, just like you are. Yeah. My pursuit happens to be one where I think money matters. I shouldn't be criticized for it, and I'm certainly not oh, criticizing I'm, you. Because uh, yeah. we, as far as I'm concerned, and you may not like this idea, but I really do, if I could clone myself, I'd do it right now. <laughs> we, need, we need a lot more Kevin O'Leary's in Canada. Well, I, I, I do. Um, I do enjoy the program, and I do not feel, I think your honesty is wonderful. I really, truly agree with the honesty. I think Thank it's you very just much. Terrific. I appreciate that. Thank you. Good question. OK, we're just going to take these last two questions, and then that'll be it. So go ahead, sir. My name's Alan. Um, I find the show invigorating. Sometimes it makes me cringe, and I want to run screaming out of the room, but uh, I'm just chasing your money out of the room, I think is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, a corollary to the cockroach note, that's not such an insult because we know that there are only two things that can survive a nuclear holocaust. My Co kind of guy, I can tell. Well, <laughs> cockroaches and Keith Richards, so... <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Does, does it drive you as mental as it drives us taxpayers when we see tax dollars just going, foop? Oh, don't and get I, and started. And I think about... <laughs> oh, no, 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 there's, no, no, there's no parties, there's no affiliation. This is a general thing from a software guru. So you look at e-health. Yeah. And you look at doctors' written prescriptions on a bottle, and you hope that the doctor gives you, you know, the right thing. 
you know, otherwise you wind up making bad deals and you blame it on the drugs. What would you do if you're running some kind of giant public-private internet partnership to increase efficiency and save us time, now aggravation, that, That's money. a very good question. I think it's a very simple solution. I, I like that question because I make the assumption, and I think I'm right, that one-third of every dollar that our government spends is wasted because it's never tested by the market. And there's no efficiency if the market isn't testing it and, and an arm's length decision isn't being made about the investment. But, but here's the solution to our problem. Um, you know, we all are lucky to be in Canada for a whole host of reasons. We're probably, in many places on Earth, the most envied country on Earth now because of what we have. We have the things that every country on Earth wants to buy from us to build their economies. And for the next 100 years, we're going to be in great shape. But here's how we could fix our problems. And they did this in Switzerland, because my dad is Swiss, and I watched, there's only 7 million Swiss people. What they said to their government, and bear with me on this, you're going to really enjoy this. They said to the bureaucrats, any time you can find a saving in what you're doing, in running government, you get to personally keep 15% of it, and you get it paid at a year-end bonus every year. And there's no cap. There's no cap to it. You've got the entire government of Switzerland working as a private partnership to cut costs. Why can't we do that? What's wrong with that? It's a very, I'm, I'm not, I don't care which party's in. I don't care if we elect a goat. It doesn't matter to me. I just want everybody in the bureaucracy that stays, doesn't matter if the NDP's in or the conservatives or the liberals, the bureaucrats control government, they spend the money. Why shouldn't they personally profit if they can save us money? I want them to get paid more to save me more. It's that simple. I, I don't know, sometimes I think about this and I want to get elected and just fix this problem. But then it's such a lousy job. <laughs> All right, let's have our last question here. Um, I was really interested in hearing your life story and some of the difficulties that you encountered growing up. What I know uh, for some people when they like encounter difficulties like family separation or a learning disability or whatever, it crushes them and uh, maybe they become ho hopeless. So how is it that some people maybe can overcome um, difficulties in their life and some people get crushed or become well, hopeless? Well, you know, look, I, I think and this is a, you know, it's, it's a heavy question, but at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, you're put on earth here to do the best you can, anytime you can. And you know, whatever your pursuit is, whatever makes you happy, you've gotta go pursue that. And I tell my kids the same thing. I say, that, I'll, end, I'll end it with this story. I was taking my son to Switzerland to visit his dad. And- Granddad. Well, his granddad, you're right, his granddad. Because he's 81, he just turned 81. <laughs> Wow. And, and I, I try and bring the kids over whenever I can to see, because he's too old to travel. It, it, it kills him to take that flight. So we go over off, and I'm there at least once a month. So I, I, Trevor was getting on the plane this time, just a couple of weeks ago. And he said to me, Dad, he's now 15, why is it that every time we get on the plane, I have to go to the left and sit in the back, and you get to sit in the front? You make your son sit in economy Absol while absolutely. you go business and, class? And, and wait, there's a point to this. And I said to him, you know, and he says, you get the great food, you get the movies. And I looked at him and said, Trevor, you don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I want him to be motivated in his life to go figure it out, because I may give my money to a cat. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. So, I mean, I, I think the idea is that if you're motivated to do something, and I'm trying to motivate entrepreneurs to go pursue wealth, that's what I do. That's what this book's about. And, and I think at the end of the day, that may keep you happy. That's my point. I enjoy it, and I hope you do too. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> All right, good job, Kevin. Take your hand here. Take my hand.